Hey guys, welcome to another episode of No Holds Barred Wrestling Radio. I'm your host Kyle, my co-host Phil with me here, and what a week it was in the WWE this week, Phil. Yep, uh, we've got, uh, basically we want to do kind of a weekly review for you guys, so we've got a bunch of the special stuff that we want to talk to you guys about. Yep. Uh, first thing we're going to do is make our Extreme Rules prediction. Yep, we kind of want to predict uh, what we think the matches will be. Um, First, let's just run down who the champions are because I think I think that's a good starting point. Yeah. Um, so Daniel Bryan, obviously our WWE World Heavyweight Champion. Uh, what do you think uh, he'll be doing at Extreme Rules? Um, you know what? I kind of see him continuing the the Triple H uh, feud they got going on right now. Uh, I see them just doing that one last match and then Triple H going back to his executive role. But uh, yeah, I see Triple H versus Daniel Bryan. Maybe the stipulation, yeah, you know, the Extreme Rules match. I don't think any special simulation will spit. Uh, stipulation will be added. Yeah, um, yeah, I think it'll either be Daniel Bryan versus Triple H because Triple H basically awarded himself a, a title shot last last week on Raw. Or I think maybe we could see a four on four match like the Shield and Kane. Or no, sorry. Um, Evolution and Kane versus Evolution versus and Kane. versus the Shield and Daniel Bryan. Yeah. See, the match I wanted to see was Evolution versus the Shield, but you know what? They might hold off on the title match and add Daniel Bryan Triple H to that picture, and you could see a good fatal f- or four and four match there. I mean, put Extreme Rules. That'd be kind of crazy. Yeah, um, and they keep referencing a war, and um, ba- I think that they're down the line we might see a war games match like do you know what that is war games yeah war games uh, from wcw right? yeah basically it's two rings side by side surrounded by your like a cage uh, a standard uh, like steel cage match but it has a roof also and it basically it's a, a team elimination match i think we might see that but i think that might be further down the line i think we might actually just get a regular standard uh one-on-one match, uh, Daniel Bryan versus HHH, probably just an Extreme Rules match. Yeah. And then yeah. maybe just S.H.I.E.L.D. versus uh, Batista, Randy Orton, and Kane for now. Well, yeah, I guess you can't really call them evolution. Cause corporate Kane's there. I guess you can call it corporate evolution. Yeah, the corporate evolution. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty good name. And then I guess since we're talking about the S.H.I.E.L.D. being in a match, I'm guessing we're not going to see a U.S. title match. <laughs> oh, I guess Rules. not, no. Dean Ambrose looks like he's going to be the longest reigning U.S. champion. I mean, come on. like This guy's hold on to this title for, like, what, almost a year now? Yeah, he won it at Extreme Rules last year, so almost... Uh... And hasn't defended it. I don't think he's ever defended it since then. Like, how do you hold this title and not defend it? That just loses the prestige of the United States Championship. I remember when they used to be defended on, like, almost a weekly basis back on yeah, SmackDown. on TV, yeah. yeah. Back when SmackDown was actually worth watching on, on that side note. I think Dean Ambrose, he just wants us to forget that he holds the title, and that means he'll he'll just hold it for as, as long as possible. Well, we'll have to see. Maybe they'll maybe they'll strip him of the title or something down the line. But uh, anyways, let's go on to our next segment here. All right, Phil, who's our next champion here? So our next champion is uh, Paige. I think we all know who she might face at Extreme Rules. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna like that match. AJ Lee versus uh, Paige. Hopefully we'll see more in a two-minute match as we did on Raw, but uh, I'm actually looking really forward to seeing this match. Yep, I think, yeah, definitely we're going to see a longer match. Uh, it seems like uh, neither AJ Lee nor Paige were ready on Raw. It was a bit of an ex- unexpected match. But, um, yeah, Paige shooting up to probably the number two favorite diva or number one favorite diva. He's number one in my books, actually. Oh, yeah? already. <laughs> uh, she's already surpassed AJ Lee now. Well, yeah. yeah. well, we'll see what she has to offer before uh, I decide. AJ Lee is probably still my number one right now. Um, but, yeah, do you think uh, they'll add a stipulation for this since it's Extreme Rules? Uh, I don't know. I mean, now that not because of the air we're in now, they can't really add any stipulation. I mean, I wish they'd go back to the little bra and panties match. But... Hmm. And we won't see those anymore because we're in the PG era. Yeah. Occasionally they do do stipulation matches for, for Divas Lumber matches. Jill. But uh, yeah. Lumberjill or uh, a tables match with like that's painted pink. Like that we saw with uh, Lay Cool and Beth Phoenix, I think. But um, I think uh, this time it's just going to be a regular match. Um, our next set of champions are the Usos, the tag team champions. Uh, the Usos, the Usos. I think I see this being more of a... Usos against Rybaxel yep. kind of match. Yeah, Rybaxel, they're, they're picking up some wins lately. I can see them uh, being contenders for the title for this uh, pay-per-view. I can see them doing maybe a, a table match. Table, Yeah, you know what? I can kind of see a table match. You know what I'd love to see, though, is uh, 
have a table set up, maybe have, you know, Curtis Axel on it, uh, and have the Usos do the flying Usos off the jump, off the top rope onto the table. Yeah. With the Ryback's power moves and Usos, uh, Usos flying moves, uh, I mean, I, 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 that's a match I would like to see, a good old-fashioned uh, tag team tables match. No, um, I, I, I would actually love to see that. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, uh, Usos are doing pretty good right now, holding on to the titles, uh, Ryback's still climbing up that step ladder, you know, I think they deserve it. Yeah. Um, our next set of champions, uh, sorry, our next champion is uh, Big E, the uh, IC champion, the Intercontinental champion. Um, I can see them facing either Cesaro, Swagger, or maybe even Fandango. Uh, you know what, Phil? I, I kind of disagree with that. I kind of see Cesaro and Jack Swagger having their own match because of the yeah. feud they're having now. Uh, Fandango, no, he's probably going to so face much. Santino for like the 150th time. Yeah. 150th time. Uh, Someone for Big E, I could kind of see maybe a singles or tri- triple threat with uh, Sheamus and Alberto Del Rio, if they ever were oh, going yeah, to do it. Yeah. Yeah, if, they were gonna, yeah, if they were going to put the IC title on the line, but who knows with WWE right now, as we can tell, like Dean Ambrose has held the US title for like 800 years now. <laughs> yeah, he's just busy with the, the, uh, the business with the Shield. Um, I think that's it for our champions. Um, We've got Rusev, who recently made his debut. I can see them putting him in a quick match against probably Ryder again. or Yeah, another job match. Gives me a Ryder, woo, woo, woo. Against, Or maybe against a member of uh, 3MB. All three members of 3MB. Squash yeah. match. Just feed squash feed Rusev more. more. <laughs> yeah. um, and then I think our last major feud going into Extreme Rules is uh, John Cena and Bray Wyatt. Yep, uh, I see them. This is going to be the last chapter in the John Cena and Bray Wyatt uh, story. Um Maybe finish it off in like an I quit style match. Uh, yeah, those two are they're good on the mic, and uh, since uh, the, an I quit match gives them an opportunity to show off their mic skills in the middle of a match, uh, that would be pretty cool. Yeah, I think I could see probably an I quit or last man standing sort of deal, yeah. uh, just to finish it off, and then uh, whatever John Cena or whatever WWE wants to do with John Cena, White's after that is up to them. I guess we'll have to see until the Raw after Extreme Rules, but other than that, Extreme Rules has some pretty uh, good car, good 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 matches on its way. I can see them maybe bringing back uh, the Ring of Fire match for, for Bray Wyatt and John Cena because they only did that once for Bray Wyatt's debut. Sorry, and I'm sorry, the Inferno match? Yeah, you'd like to see an Inferno match, Inferno right? Match. Where, where you well, actually have to say... Screw the Ring of Fire match. I can't believe they, they toned that down. That was terrible, that Kane and Wyatt family Bray, like uh, Ring of Fire match. Like, come on now. That was just a regular pinfall or submission match, but with just fire There's fire the ring. There's, that's useless. They you, need to bring back the Infernal match. You want to see some people yeah. set on fire, you right? put some fire clothing underneath your attire. I mean, this, they, could, you know, they can do something with that match, just other than this Ring of Fire match. But anyways, well, yeah, uh, yeah, I, I, can kinda um, see, I can kind of see that being a stipulation too as well. Yeah, um, I think that's pretty much it for... For extreme rules, I mean, um, the card will obviously flesh out in the upcoming weeks, but uh, those are uh, probably uh, the best predictions for now. All right. All right. So on to the debut of uh, a new segment we'll be featuring every Sunday. My will be the top moments of the week. Uh, I'll rank them one through four. Uh, first of all, I'll start off with number four. Is the top moment of the week is Paige becoming the new Divas champion. Uh, good for her, uh, doing her work in NXT, bringing her up for one match on Raw. It wasn't really quite the longest match everyone was expecting, but again, as we can tell, they probably go to Extreme Rules, and we'll see actually a full-on Divas match. But good for Paige. That was my ranked four moment of the week. Uh, my ranked three moment of the week is Cesaro being a Paul Heyman guy. Now, I mean, no one expected this to happen. Uh, this was a complete surprise, Uh Cesaro comes to the ring, uh, Zeb Coulter's telling Cesaro he's a Zeb Coulter guy, and then Cesaro, I love when Cesaro took the mic away, said, actually, I am a Paul Heyman guy. The crowd lost its mind. That was just, WWE did a great job with that, and I can see Cesaro and Paul Heyman having big plans in the near future. Uh, but that is my three rank three moment of the week. Coming in at number two, we have Daniel Bryan becoming the new WWE World Champion. Everyone's been waiting on this since last year at SummerSlam. Uh, for a clean win and for Dan O'Brien to be the new face of the company, WWE got a good job of having the climax of that being at WrestleMania. Uh, they pull off an extremely good match, uh, Dan O'Brien, Triple H, and then him winning that, going on to the main event and winning the title uh, in a Chris Benoit WrestleMania 20 style, making Batista type out to the yes lock. 
Uh, but good for Daniel Bryan. It's a champion we need right now. And uh, I see them using Daniel Bryan a lot more in the near future. Uh, maybe turning him into another kind of John Cena type character. That's a top guy because, as we all know, John Cena won't be there forever. Which I'm hoping is sometime soon, maybe. But um, that's just me. Uh, okay, on to the number one moment of the week. And I think it's everyone's number one moment of the week. Is The Undertaker becoming 20 and 1 at or 21 in 1, sorry, at WrestleMania. Now, I could not believe when I first seen this, uh, when I was watching it live, I dropped down to the ground, and I probably couldn't get up for, like, another 10 minutes. It was actually during a Divas match that I finally stood up, but I couldn't believe this. Like, who knew that Brock Lesnar would be the guy to end the streak? Yes, they're both part-time wrestlers, and is a part-time wrestler ending the streak, but my thoughts would be that, I think Undertaker or someone that's like a John Cena caliber type superstar to end the streak. Or they don't even end the streak. You know what? Have Undertaker retired that streak. Have him have that prestige in his in his Hall of Fame speech. You know, I'm the only person to lose at WrestleMania. But of course now, uh, the streak is broken. Uh, who knows what, what's left for the Undertaker. Maybe he'll come back for one last match. Uh, could be against Sting. Could be against John Cena. And just, you know, recover from that WrestleMania defeat. Uh, I guess we'll have to see in the near future, but that is my top moments of the week, and uh, we'll be on to the next segment here by my partner, Phil. All right, Sign Masters. Basically, this is just a, a short little segment where I want to run down some uh, some funny and interesting signs uh, seen in the crowds this week. Um, the first one I have is, I'm from Winnipeg, you idiot, which is obviously a callback to when Chris Jericho yelled at a fan who told him to go back to Toronto. Um, I'm interested in seeing if Chris Jericho is going to come back. I don't think there's any plans for him to come back. There's news on his third book coming out. Um, if you can, read his first and second book because they're really good. Probably the best wrestling, probably two of the best wrestling books I've read. Um, we've got a... Actually, this is a recurring sign. This I've been seeing this one since last year. Vancouver for WrestleMania. This one was actually on Wrestle, uh, WrestleMania this week. Raw, SmackDown. I believe it was also on Main Event. Um, obviously, this fan, he really wants... Um, WrestleMania to host, sorry, Vancouver to host WrestleMania. Probably the closest he's ever got was uh, Seattle for uh, WrestleMania 19. Um, we've got a couple of Antonio Cesaro signs. Um, swing me. This fan wanted to be swung by Cesaro, obviously. And we've got um, Can He Swing the Big Show? Um, unfortunately, we didn't see that this week, but uh, maybe someday we will see Cesaro swing the Big Show. That'd be pretty cool. Um, another sign we have is It's Not Fair to Flair. I guess this guy is referring to the Evolution reunion. We haven't been seeing a Ric Flair included in that, and obviously this fan, he wants to see uh, Flair come back and uh, reunite with Evolution, as, as I'm sure most of us probably, we would like to see. Um, this one wasn't actually a sign, but it was a notable shirt. I'm a Pat Patterson guy. I just thought that was a funny, uh, a funny shirt in the crowd. Um, another sign we have is, it's the Cajun Dome, brother, because obviously um, Hulk Hogan, he thought he was back at WrestleMania 3, at WrestleMania 30, he called the, the Superdome the Silver Dome, so... When they were in Cajun Dome, this fan felt like uh, pointing that out to uh, the Hulkster. Um, we've got another sign, Daniel Bryan for governor. Um, I'm not sure if Daniel Bryan can be the governor of Louisiana, see seeing as he's from the state of Washington. Um, another sign we have is, I have good news, because bad news Barrett always has bad news. This fan has good news. Um, this is a, obviously a Batista fan. His sign said, Yay, Tista, instead of Boo, Tista. And then we have a really random sign that I saw at WrestleMania 30. It was, vote for Quimby. This guy drew Diamond Joe Quimby on his sign, and he wanted us to all to vote for Joe Quimby. And uh, yeah, those are all for um, all these funny signs that I saw this week. Thanks for listening. All right, time for our final segment of the show. It's going to be called Around the Wrestling World. Basically just news that's uh, mainstreaming. Uh, the top stories in wrestling today. Uh, what I have here, Phil, is I have possible opponents for WrestleMania or for Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 31. They've mentioned there's possible rumors of The Rock and Cesaro. All right, so I think um, The Rock is probably the the biggest probably the biggest chance of facing Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania next year because yeah. yeah. I have read some rumors that The Rock does want to be does want to wrestle an actual match at WrestleMania 31. For whatever reason, he couldn't do it this year. But um, yeah, I'm happy that he appeared in that segment. I mean, that was everyone's favorite WrestleMania segment in a long time. The Rock's becoming more of a Hollywood person right now. I think uh, WrestleMania. I think we'll be seeing WrestleMania 31 will be his last wrestling match. 
as uh, I don't know if anyone knows, but at WrestleMania 29, uh, Rock did indeed hurt himself after that John Cena match uh, requiring surgery on his abdomen and uh, organs inside, which prevented him from going to the premiere of Fast Five, um, or if it was a Fast Six, I believe. Um, the Rock, uh, you know what, he could come back. I see him, if he does coming back to face Lesnar, maybe a few building from Royal Rumble to WrestleMania, so as Undertaker does every year. Um, but I kind of see the the Rock and Brock Lesnar putting on a good match. That's a good match to promote. Uh, Rock or Brock Lesnar Cesaro, you can probably have that as a Survivor Series uh, Royal Rumble SummerSlam type of match. Uh, two Paul Heyman guys going at it, uh, but not a WrestleMania caliber type of match, I think. Yeah, I mean Brock Lesnar, um, he did he did have two matches after WrestleMania last year. He faced he had a rematch against Triple H in the cage match at Extreme Rules, which he won, and he also had. Um, the best versus the beast at uh, SummerSlam, in which he defeated yeah. uh, CM Punk. I suppose, um, yeah, Brock Lesnar maybe will have another pay per view pay per view match before next year's WrestleMania, and yeah, I can see him facing uh, Cesaro or uh, maybe a member of the Shield, such such as uh, Roman Reigns, because um, he's really hot right now, and um, he might break off as a single superstar. Yeah, let's just hope it's not uh, Rock letting us know via satellite. Uh, let's hope he actually makes an appearance, maybe work out his busy schedule, quote, quote. Um, but other than that, we'll have to see for that now in the coming year. Second bit of news we have this week is Sting. Uh, the whole thing with the whole Sting situation. Uh, everyone was looking into that over the weekend of WrestleMania, seeing is he going to appear at WrestleMania, is he going to appear on Monday Night Raw after WrestleMania. Has he signed a contract? Has he not? Um... Uh, the sources I've gotten so far is that he's been given the contract, but he hasn't signed it yet. Uh, maybe Sting's just waiting to have the few deals probably tweaked out. Um, he was at WrestleCon at WrestleMania weekend, Phil. Uh, he did mention uh, his favorite number was 31. Whether yeah. or not that's teasing next year's WrestleMania or him just trolling, uh, we'll have to see. Yeah, obviously, I think they are... In discussions right now, I mean, yeah, Sting. My favorite, my favorite number is thirty-one. That's obviously alluding to, to WrestleMania next year. Um, but yeah, no, no Sting. Uh, every every year, every year since uh, WCW um, was bought out, uh, there's just discussions of Sting just yeah. signing with WWE, uh, and it usually it usually intensifies at uh, around WrestleMania season. Um, I'm guessing probably it will happen next year finally. And I'm sure disappointed Sting fan from uh, Raw will, will be really happy about that. <laughs> I hope he's in the front row at WrestleMania. they got to give him a front row ticket. That wasn't fair to that kid. But uh, who knows? Maybe uh, maybe we'll see Sting Undertaker. I guess a lot of fantasy fans have been uh, wanting to see that match for a long time. Uh, I, they can both pull off the same caliber type of match, uh, both being of their age and uh, the wrestling style. I'd love to see that. I mean... That'd be, sick. That'd be a good match to, to see. Uh, Undertaker's final match going into the Hall of Fame against Sting. Yeah. Or maybe even Sting against, uh, who knows, anyone. Anyone they can build a feud with. Yeah, like, I mean, Sting versus John Cena. Sting versus, uh, I would have liked to see Sha Sting versus Shawn Michaels, but Shawn Michaels retired, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, I mean, Sting and Undertaker, they could probably work out a better match than what we saw at uh, WrestleMania 30, Brock Lesnar and Undertaker. I mean, Brock Lesnar, he's a... He's a, an MMA fighter, and Undertaker, that's not really his style. So, yeah, hopefully if we do see Sting versus Undertaker, it'll be a, a better worked-out match. Other than that, uh, any minor notes during the wrestling world right now, Daniel Bryan has married Brie Bella. Uh, nothing else I've read lately, but if anything comes up, we will have it next week on our weekly countdown show next Sunday. Other than that, I'm your host, Kyle. I'm Phil. That's my host, Phil, and we're out.